Hey Canucks fans, before we dive into today's news, make sure to hit that subscribe button on Vancouver Canucks News Today fans so you never miss a single update on your favorite team. Now, let's talk about the situation that's got everyone buzzing. For a moment, it looked like the Vancouver Canucks were set up perfectly for the 2024-25 season with their goaltending lineup. With Vezina runner-up Thatcher Demko and playoff hero Archer Silovs locked in for a combined cap hit of just $585 million, the Canucks were in a fantastic position, spending less on their two goalies than most teams do on just one starter. But things have taken a turn. The good news, Demko and Silovs are still under contract and expected to form the goaltending duo at some point this season. The bad news? Unless you've been living under a rock, you already know. Demko isn't fully healthy and could miss more time, potentially pushing his return into October, right when the regular season begins. It's quite a shock to go from a perfect budget setup to scrambling to find a veteran temporary replacement in just a few weeks. This quick change has left many fans and media members feeling uneasy. But is this really such a big problem? If Demko eventually returns and is truly 100% healthy, or as close as modern medicine can get, this issue becomes short-term and manageable. In fact, there's a good chance the waiver wire could offer some solid solutions for the Canucks if they can hold out for another month. There's been some chatter about signing UFA Kevin Lankinen as a temporary replacement. While he's a decent option in terms of goaltending, Lankinen's salary cap hit was $2 million last year and the Canucks aren't keen on paying that much for another goalie. If Lankinen doesn't offer a significant discount, the team will likely look elsewhere, a decision that seems probable since he hasn't signed anywhere yet. There have also been discussions about potential trade targets, perhaps using the fourth-round pick acquired in exchange for Vasily Podkolzin. However, finding someone worth that price on the trade market is tough, especially if salary retention is involved which could cost more than a fourth rounder. The waiver wire offers a virtually free method to get a new goalie. With the crowded ranks of NHL goalies, there should be some quality options available through waivers soon. Predicting which forwards and defensemen might be waived in September or October is usually tricky, but predicting which goalies might be waived is easier. Just look at the goalie depth charts around the league and find teams with at least three NHL caliber goalies. Most likely, one of these goalies will hit waivers before the season begins. The Los Angeles Kings will have veterans Darcy Quemper, Dave Rittich, and Phoenix Copley in camp. Either Rittich or Copley could be a good, cheap veteran signing. The Winnipeg Jets must choose between Kaapo Kakonen and Eric Comrie to back up Connor Hellebike, with the other heading to waivers. In Buffalo, James Reimer will likely be beaten out by the younger Devin Levi and could find himself on the waiver wire. The Detroit Red Wings have Villa Husso, Cam Talbot, Alex Lyon, and top prospect Sebastian Cossa fighting for a spot in camp. Husso is most likely to be cut, but if Lyon ends up on waivers, he could be a great pickup. If Spencer Knight returns to the NHL full-time behind Sergei Bobrovsky, the backup they signed, Chris Dreger, might hit waivers. Toronto will waive Matt Murray, but if the Canucks pick him up, we might have to laugh. Old friend Spencer Martin is likely to be outplayed by Pyotr Kochetkov and Freddie Anderson in Carolina, meaning he'll head back to waivers. Another former Canuck, Louis Domingue, is stuck behind Igor Shestokin and Jonathan Quick in New York and will likely be waived too. And honestly, this list is just a quick glance at team depth charts for the most obvious candidates. There are at least eight teams likely to waive a quality goalie before the regular season begins, or at least a goalie good enough to platoon with Seelofs. In the short term, the number could even be higher by the time all is said and done. These goalies might even be a better fit than, say, a Lankinen. Signing a UFA like Lankinen comes with the expectation of playing time, whereas a waiver pickup might be just happy to stay in the NHL and wouldn't mind backing up Seelovs if the young goalie takes charge. Of course, there are some downsides to waiting on the waiver wire. It means the Canucks might have to go through the entire preseason with just Seelovs, Giri Patera, and Nikita Tolopilo in goal but that doesn't seem like a huge issue. There's also the aspect of having the decisions in other teams' hands. Not only does a team have to cut a goalie before they hit waivers, but every other team ahead of the Canucks in the waiver order would also have to pass on them. But the odds of the Canucks getting no waiver offers are low, as that would mean several other teams making waiver claims, and there aren't many open goalie spots in the league. 